Hello, and welcome to episode 155 of At Percussion. This is Megan Arns. I'm flying solo in this episode. You might have noticed that I was missing from five recent episodes, and that's because I was studying in Ghana, West Africa. While I was there, I was able to do interviews with two wonderful master musicians and directors of the cultural centers that I was at. The first interview is with Jerome Balsab from the Dagara Music Center. This center was formed by Bernard Woma, and as I've mentioned on recent episodes, Bernard unfortunately passed away recently. While we were at the center, preparations were being made for his funeral, and I'm happy to say that the center is alive and well and carrying on his legacy and his spirit. The second interview is with Emmanuel Ogbelli from the Dogbe Cultural Institute. You might notice, especially in the first interview, that there's some background noise. This is very common in Ghana because community is a part of everyday life. So actually what you hear is the sound of dinner preparations of one of my favorite Ghanaian dishes called fufu. So what you hear is is cassava being pounded. So without further ado, here are interviews with Jerome Balsab and Emmanuel Agbelli. So your you mentioned that you were from a family of yeah. xylophone players yeah. and that your grandfather played and that your you played his xylophone. Can you yeah. tell us about how you started after he passed away? Yeah, when uh, on I mean on his lifetime, uh, she knows I'm a xylophone player. Mm-hmm. As because you were born to play. I was, I was born to play. And, when and I, what does that mean, to be born to play? How do you know? Uh, no, you're born to play because uh, when you're born as a fresh, really fresh baby came out from your, your womb, uh-huh. your mommy womb, uh-huh. uh, there's a sign that you can, people see. If you're born and your hands are clicks, your thumbs are clicks, means you are... Given a xylophone. Yeah. That is the sign to hold the xylophone sticks. So your hands are kind of, I know we're in audio yes. here, so for our listeners, yes. Jerome is clenching his hands or he's holding his hands in a way that there would be xylophone mouths Zyl- Zyl- in them. Yes, yeah, exactly. So you came out of your mother's womb yeah. doing that. Doing that. Yeah. And then when uh, my father gets to know this, uh, he quickly made a manisha mallet. Mm hmm. No, those little mallet manisha, mm-hmm. and then put it on the bed where I sleep. So uh, that's so that she have given me fully the xylophone because that is the mallet she gave to me. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when I grew up to be small, started crawling, uh, I actually became like a little trouble because I don't want my daddy to play. Anytime she sat on the gym to play, I'll crawl and take the stick out of his hand. And it's like, take you it. wanted to be playing. Yeah, yeah. He said, like, he got angry and said, take it and come and play. Take it. Anytime she sit on the xylophone and then I, and I just harassed him, he said, come take it. So they were like, she got to know what gift God gave to me. So when I grew like between six, no, that about, I was like, oh, yeah, I play myself and I play so fast and I play something meaningful. Mm-hmm. So my daddy always say, yeah, you have taken the work I do. I've taken the work my father do. You have also taken the work that I do. So, and I'm so grateful that you have taken the work that I do. Um, now, back home, xylophone players seem to be nothing because they didn't realize that xylophone is a gift. People just play and they say, so if you are a xylophone player, what benefit do you get? Because uh, they are only waiting for someone to die. And they go and play and get some little coins. That's all the benefit they get. But xylophone is actually a music mm-hmm. that I mean, other people are very, very interesting to get. Mm-hmm. So when I, when, we grew up, when I grew up and then I'd be playing with other people, then I began to learn other different hands from people, as I said. Because as soon as we go to the funerals, we, you are not just going to play, but even if you don't have the chance to play, and someone play, you listen to the person. That's where you get a, a new songs. That's where you get a new style. That's where you, you learn. Mm-hmm. You know, even though you, haven't, you don't have the chance to play. 
So when you're really just you're immersed in this music from yeah. a very young age because yes, your entire the, family and entire played family. and your whole community played and right. the music is a part of daily life yeah, exactly. and celebrations. So you're learning new repertoire by hearing, by it, hearing it and and no, just being exposed it to it. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that, that's fascinating. That 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 that's that's how it is. That's how everyone began. Yeah. And um, I happened to uh, I met Bernard. Mm-hmm. When we were all, we all had the same school. That's where we were. I knew him when she was small. When she was small, she was really small and they pushed him into school. But I grew up, I was like 12, 13 before I can go to school. Mm-hmm. So when I got to school and I saw him, and she was like kind of ahead. She like, yeah, go to like um, uh, uh, third grade while I was in the first grade or something like that. So, and then we all played together. So uh, when we do, when we sit down, on the, uh, it's happened that we all play left. So when we sit on the jails, people just like, oh, okay, that is it. This is what we actually want. So this guy, we get to know ourselves when we were young, when we were kids, until we all grew up. And then we split off. I went to a different school. She also went to a different school. Mm-hmm. And then we met again in the house when she lost her mother. Okay. L- lost his mother. So we met there, and then she asked me, Hey, Kelly, I have not seen you for years now. I said, Yeah, I have not also seen you. Say, Where are you? And I said, I'm in Bruna Hafo, Sunyani. I said, Yeah, I'm also in Accra. I said, What are you doing? And I said, I've just done with my school. He said, Oh, yeah, I'm also working with a national dance group. Mm-hmm. If you want, yeah, you can come, and then we, we, I have a, a dance, just a local dance group, so we can work on that. And I left, and I left the village, and I came and met him. So we started off from Mamo B. That's where we started the group first. Okay. And then we moved to Mibia. Okay. And then uh, when I came, uh, we didn't start a group yet. So I was working at uh, Legon. Mm-hmm. I was one of the xylophone players at Legon. Mm-hmm. And then when she had thought of um, establishing his own uh, center, his own uh, business center, music and dance and everything, she told me, Okay, I'm not going. I knew I, I will not go back to National Theatre, but I want you to go and represent me. So I, I stopped from the uh, Legon and went to the National Theatre okay. to represent Bernard over there. Okay. So we worked for some times and then uh, I asked for permission and travel. And then I felt sick at where I was going. I was almost like passed away. So the days they gave me to report it to the work, I just delayed it. And wow. when I get back to the way, they say, yeah, you, you vacate your post. So the you lost left. your job. Yeah, I lost my job. Wow. And then, then I say, okay, don't worry, just come back. We started the, the business. Ah. So that's where we started the business. And that I was around see. 2000. Okay, and that was in 2000. That was so around. to back up a little bit, and for our listeners who might be less familiar with the geography of yeah. Ghana, yeah. you're from the Dagara region, right. which is... The northwest, the northwest yeah. region, yeah. and that's where you met Bernard, and that's, that's where you were in school together, and you grew up together. Right. And it's so interesting that now you're in the southern part of the country, and um, that this music that you're playing um, is is from the northern region, yeah. but you're located in the south. Yeah. And I think that's one of the amazing things about this center is that you can come here to Dagara Music Center and learn not just one style of music, but you right. can learn the Dagara tradition yeah. and the Jeels. Um, and you can also, like we are also studying the Ga tradition right. um, with Eddie. We're doing drumming and right. dancing um, with the dancers from Sakamu. And so you can learn multiple uh, traditional right. regions yeah. in, in Ghana, which is really amazing. Yeah. But the whole center was founded on the Dagara tradition, Dagara right? Tradition, and the yeah. Dagara music. Right. That's amazing. So, also to catch up our listeners, I did a um, a short segment after Bernard passed away. Bernard, we're talking about, of course, is Bernard Woma, and um, this was the center that that he and Jerome founded. And so, it's interesting being here without Bernard, yeah. you know, now that he's passed away and funeral preparations are, are being made and people are mourning the loss of this great man, can you just tell us, a, I know it's difficult probably to put into words, but a little bit about how you and the rest of the, the, the DMC staff and Sakamu are kind of dealing with this loss? Well, uh... 
his sudden death had, I mean, just brought uh, everybody uh, power down a little bit because uh, when we were there, uh, she was actually sick for some years now, yeah. as I know. Uh, but uh, just last two years ago that we realized that the sickness came back and mm -hmm. then it was like so bad, it was so terrible. And then you now uh, we keep praying for him to be recovered. Uh, we are not God, we are not doctors. We only look at the, 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 the body and tell how the sickness is getting. Yeah, you could just tell that he was yeah, weak, she was weakening, weak, and weakening and you know, reducing weight and all yeah. kinds of things. So, um, that is about two years ago that we realized this, this changes. And then we keep praying for him, and then he said, no problem, I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. Then we'll all go around doing our stuff. Uh, until uh, last year, she came home for a festival. And then when she came down to Ghana for the festival and went down to the north, she was actually not feeling good at all. Mm -hmm. So she was like, she can't even you know, sit in the public to witness what is going on. So yeah. she's like running, hiding himself because, you know, she's being deformed by, by the by whole the sickness. The sickness and you know, she, she doesn't want people to be seeing him often looking at the body in which he is. So she's more or less hiding himself for that. And then pretty soon, you know, she felt so bad and they have to only carry him to hospital. And then she was like off and on in the hospital. She go to the hospital today, they discharge him, the next day she go back. And then because he knew America, he has a daughter there who uh, you know, can get him better treatment, better medicine and everything good than Ghana. So he decided to say, oh, I'm coming back to America mm -hmm. to be able to get a good daughter and get good medicine to cure my sicknesses. And then she came back. And then we did a work pretty good. You now he had treatment, everything. And then, so this year, we went, we, she went. He we went on uh, August, and then we went on uh, November. And then when we got there, she also flew from Bloomington to Buffalo. That's where she go to meet us. Mm -hmm. she, was also, she, she was coming back again for the festival right and then when we got there and i look at this guy i was like oh my god uh she was completely changed and she was like she can't even look at your face she was like uh so she can't even hold a pen to sign a signature of uh she was trying to write a check to somebody else she can't hold a pen to sign the signature so i don't know how she does that whether she did a thumbprint or something and then she did a check-in and then she flew back to Ghana for the program. Mm -hmm. And then I learned she was running to, to the hospital off her own, off her own, off her own, until she came back again, just to have a good medicine to I mean, cure the sicknesses. And then when she landed at JFK, I learned she was, she was completely like, she could not even talk. And then it happened that we had somebody to pick him from the airport. So the person got him there, and then in the car she can't talk, she can't even sit well, so he have to lie down, and then she was complaining, body pains, and so many things. So uh, we told the guy to take him right away from the airport to a hospital. Mm -hmm. So the guy took him to the hospital, and she was admitted. And then when we got there to visit him, uh, we, 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 we can't go as group, because uh, the policy says, and I mean, that doctor policy says you can't go as group, so we are going individually just to see him. Okay. So when I got there to see him, um, she was just connected with tubes all over the body, everywhere of the body, even included the head. Yeah. The tube was all over yeah. the body. And then she was like, oh, I'm going to be fine. Just go and do the performance. <laughs> just go. Do the performance. I'll be fine. <sighs> uh, in fact, I nearly... I nearly, I nearly cry because the way I look at him and the way she is looking, and then she can't even look my face for me to you know to have some secrets with him, and she was just like, drop the face down, and then I'm fine, I'm fine, just going to be the person. And I look at this guy to say, you are not fine because look at the way you are, you are not fine at yeah. all. And say I'm fine, let's just go for the funeral, and I just say okay, let me pray for you. 
and I say prayers for him and say thank you. Yeah, I know I'll be fine. Just go and do the performance. So we left for the performance. Mm -hmm. And then he got better, somehow better, not fully better. Mm -hmm. And when she gets somehow better, the daughter discharged him and she went back to Bloomington. Mm -hmm. And then he flew from Bloomington to join us at Rochester mm -hmm. for a performance. And that's where we started again. And then we go around performing sometimes. He flew back to Bloomington to see the daughter and come back uh -huh. until we meet uh, at the, uh, where was the place that we came from to uh, uh, Missouri. We, we we started from as, uh, as, as, as some state before uh -huh. we get to Missouri, uh -huh. and then when we get to Missouri, I can see the power went down completely, and yeah. every everyone can see it. But she was like, "No, I have to do it," mm -hmm. and and I just said it wasn't a mandate that looking at your situation, no one is forcing you to do it. We know we can do it on your name. Just wait when we do it. Yeah, then you can still have the power to go out and talk. Yeah. to the audience. Mm -hmm. This is what I think it is good. So you suggested that maybe he shouldn't play yeah, the concert. He should, yes. He should do the talking. Do the talking, <laughs> no? But yeah. you are like, I will play. I will play. Anytime we, we meet at a concert, I say, don't just play. We'll play. You do the talking. And she said, no, I'm here to, to perform. He's so persistent. He's yeah, persistent to do it. <laughs> so, as I said, we did a performance, uh, the last performance at uh, Missouri there. And then when we well, the last performance and then we were driving from Missouri to Bloomington and that was the day she is to see his doctors so I suggest to the driver that we should even go home to drop the people and the instrument let's go right Straight away to the, to the hospital. hospital to drop him so that she should have more time with the doctor than going home with everybody delayed and he got there probably she might miss the daughter or the daughter might have small time with him but if we pass through the doctor leave him with the daughter the daughter will have a whole lot of time to you know to examine the body and see what i mean medicine she needed again to take so we pass through the hospital and then go and drop the people in the house then the driver go back and get him mm -hmm. and he got back and said yeah i'm fine i think i'm okay so i will go with you guys the next day so that I can, I'll be with my son, that is Bismarck, uh -huh. and you no know, Bismarck lives at um, um, Fredonia. Okay. So we took him and dropped him at uh, Fredonia and we went to Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Fredonia to Buffalo is just about 45 minute drive. Uh -huh. So we just dropped him and went back and went home. And then uh, the next day, uh, our driver was supposed to go back to uh, uh, Fredonia to get him so that he can come and take a bus at uh, Buffalo to get to the performance. Okay. And by looking at the situation in which we see him, she cannot even carry a little bag. Yeah. How is he going to carry a xylophone? Yeah. And a suitcase he has. How is he going to carry all that? She, meanwhile, she cannot even carry the small thing. Right. So we decided that uh, one of uh, the students who have been to Ghana, uh, Matthew, mm -hmm. uh, she, it's happened that she was also there to do a performance with uh, Jamie. So we said, Matthew, I know your performance is over. You just wanted to hang out with us. You go and get Bernard from uh, Fredonia, take him to the performance, be a companion to him. You can help take the material, the jewel and everything, and then help him for the performance. And Matthew said, sure, yeah, I can do it. So she went to Fredonia the next day to get Bernard, and they go for the performance. Okay. And then when they get to the ground, that um, a particular state, and then we saw the pictures of the performance he does. Uh, we saw pictures of that, and then that was fine. And then they went to um, Kentucky uh -huh. for the last performance that he's supposed to do, to mm -hmm. do, and go back to Bloomington. Uh -huh. And that was where uh, he got there. And then, but then we were also, I mean, prepared to go, come back to Ghana. Yes. So we were at the JFK in um, in New York. Uh, waiting for our flight, uh -huh. trying to find, you know, checking our flight, and then we heard um, that his situation was really worse yeah. than the, before that we see. That the situation is now completely worse, and they rushed him to emergency room while we were still, you know, trying in to the find airport, the, yeah. the airport, so in New York. So we couldn't go on Sunday that we supposed to leave. So we went, uh, we went to find a hotel to sleep for two days. Mm -hmm. 
um, that Sunday and Monday and leave on Tuesday. So um, when uh, we keep calling to find out what is going on, sometimes, no, America is not like Ghana. Sometimes the message doesn't come. They are trying to hide certain things from, 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 from us. So, um, no, this guy was really suffering, about to pass away, and anytime we, we call, they say, oh, no problem, he's getting better, or you know, something like that. The um, hospital? I mean, people that, you can't call a doctor, so we yeah. just call any other person that's closer to him. Uh-huh. And then they kept saying, oh, she's getting better, or something like that. I see. So, um, until we, no, they know they cannot hide the secret anymore. They call, but then Joyce, the daughter, and the son, Bismarck, and Julius were there. So they were feeling the, the information, yeah. the condition in which she is. And finally, they said she's with oxygen. And we said, oh my God, it shouldn't happen that way. But no. And then we left. So when we leave and get back to Ghana the next day, yeah, we keep calling to find out. And finally, we get here on Wednesday. We leave Tuesday, get back here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we had to pass away. So that was really painful, and then everybody was so sad. I'm sure, yeah. And now that day was my sad day ever. Yeah. Because people were crying. I was trying to just console other people, their wife, everybody, the whole time the Dagara people came at that night. And everybody was just crying. I was crying as well, but trying to you know, stop other people, you not know, just for crying too much. Yeah. But it, it just it couldn't happen. So someone came and just advised me just to let them cry, and for some times then we can quiet them down. Yeah. So I allowed let them, them to cry. Yeah. I allowed them just to cry for a while, as much as they can cry, and then I go and I say, yeah, I understand it, but it's painful. If for, if I have the power, I would really let that happen. If you have the power, you would really let that happen. Of course, but not, yeah. It's, it's God who, no, it's God's work. Yeah. God gave him to the world, mm-hmm. and God has taken him back from the world where he is. Mm-hmm. So we have no power. You, we can cry and kill ourselves, but he's not going to come back. Just to understand that, yeah, it's God's work. It's not human work. We, we can do that. So um, that had uh, the whole thing myself and then I start life from childhood and this is how it ends. Right. So sad. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, that must have been a really difficult experience to go through um, and, and see him suffer like that. And, you know, you're talking about being in the States and being on the road. Maybe um, maybe that leads to a next question of, of of um, Sakamu touring. So Sakamu has been touring for the past 10 years in the United States, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, can you tell us a little bit about how that came about, the first tour, and um, what your experience has been like touring this traditional music in the United States? Yeah. Um, I think uh, the very first year, 2005, was the year. Was it? Yeah, 2005. Uh, that was the year we started touring, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, the first year was kind of crazy. We only have uh, um, how many days? Forty, forty-nine days. Okay. Yeah, forty-nine days, and we did ninety-nine shows on forty, forty-five days. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we get there. Uh, the bus that we had to travel with was a school bus, a mini nice. school bus. <laughs> you know? And that is the bus that was, 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 was always squeezed in. Yeah. We can't face it. Sometimes the heat will break and we have to sit. And they gave us some, I don't know what that, those things are. They are like something you shake Hot it. hands? Hot hands. Yes. yes. You, you shake it. <laughs> And when they get hot, you hold it or you put it on your shoes right. just to warm your feet. So we're giving those things, hot hands then. So we shake, 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 shake and put it on your shoes and tie it so that your, to your try feet... To stay warm. Yeah, to just to stay warm. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we did that uh, for the uh, 40, 44, 45 days. Uh, and then uh, finished our 99 shows 
within the four, four, five or four, four days. That was the first tour. For, that was the first tour. Wow. And it was so crazy. That was the first time I've seen the snow, and many people have seen snow. Yeah. That was the first time we, you no, know, we, we experienced life outside. Right. So yeah, it was a challenge to all of us. Yeah. A couple of people fall down like crazy in the snow because we don't know how to walk yeah. in the snow. So we, people were just falling down here and there. No, falling down. We don't even no the food was completely different. Yeah. We can't eat. Um so we decided to be eating something all the times in Chinese restaurants because Chinese restaurants have so much different food, so yeah. much different stuff going on. So you can find something that, so that if you take is something, more familiar yes. to you, that you like. Yeah. If you take something you don't like it, you just leave it and go for another one. I if see. you don't like it, go. So we keep testing the food uh-huh. every time I see. we get yeah. So that you test it and probably you get something that you like small. Then and you, you start to learn you like. what, what you like. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's how it started. So when the uh, 45 days ended or 44 days ended and we came back, we have to share that experience with those who have not got the chance to go. Say, this is what it is. So um, it was crazy. People actually, you no, know, Africans, we, our bodies are quite like strong. Mm-hmm. So people don't get sick, but we hate the cold. We <laughs> hate the snow. So. When even if in the rooms where the room is being heated, mm-hmm. but we still put on jacket, you're still because cold. It's still cold. Yeah. So well, I mean, being in the United States, you're not even in the the southern part. You choose Buffalo, New York, to be based out of. It could not really have much more of an opposite climate than Ghana. Yeah, I don't know how we choose. They choose because first the first three we were in. Uh, uh, Fredonia, that's where Ghana was staying. Right. And that's where Griffin was also staying. Right. So the first trip we went to Fredonia. And no, Fredonia and Buffalo are the same temperature of everything. Right. A lot of snows and everything. So it's almost the same thing. Stay at Fredonia and stay at uh, Buffalo is almost the same thing. Right. So, but I don't know why they choose to stay in those um, states. They should have looked look for a different state where, I mean, like Texas. Texas is a kind of a little hot. When we traveled to um, Arizona, mm-hmm. that was good, right? That was really good. I uh, <laughs> just d- probably say, I don't just want to go out at all. I love that place. So when I got there, oh, I just take off my jacket, take off my uh, sweater, and I have my little singlet with me, and I just walk out and start this. Felt just like home. I just feel like. Then I can stand and look at a distance because the, gra- the grass was short, the tree was short, and I can look for it, look at far away distant and it, 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 we love that we just love that place right and then when we got to Texas Texas is good but no, still the same you can't see far because there were a lot of high high trees and big big houses that you can see far right but Texas was also good right yeah awesome well thank you so much for, for chatting with me and like I said we've had a wonderful experience here at the Dagara Music Center and it's been wonderful learning from you and the rest of the staff and thank you so much for you know sharing your your music and your your culture and tradition with us thank you so uh, it is so yeah also thank you for i mean as i said uh, uh when this sudden uh message came to us about the death of bernard i was telling you other people decided to change their mind for just because it's no more um uh, yeah, it's not just one person who does everything, mm-hmm. at least, even at all. If you know, it doesn't matter how, 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 I mean, how much stuff you know, but at least you can't do the work just by yourself. Of there course, should be yes. other people. It takes that, a village, uh, as they say. You know, also take a turn of doing something to help it. Yeah. So uh, it came to a time Bernard doesn't even do anything because he already got a name down, and then sometimes when the student comes, you just say, hey, Jerome, go, go, go and take care of them do that, do that, do that. So I was like running up and down, taking care of explaining the, the different dances, explaining the culture, talking about you no know, life and businesses and everything. So it came to a point that she doesn't even do anything and then we do the work. So I'm so sorry to those who say Bernard is not here. I mean, she's no more there. Then the work doesn't go on. No, 
we still carry the work on. Yes. And we still do as it does. Even it could be a little that how it works. Mm -hmm. When a president dies and a, a different president comes, it takes a while for the different that president to be able to withstand the pressure to to I mean to withstand everything, but not just that you come in and then like be the best. No. There will be challenges to that president to do, not to take yeah. before he can be able to not to do something. Mm -hmm. And that is the challenges we are all taking now. I um, apologize to all of you who are here. Now, in terms of speaking, Bernard has stayed there, and she know America. She had America, America accent. Mm -hmm. She 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 have gone to university there, and she seemed to know how to speak English prep, uh, I mean well, pretty mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she have your accent. She can speak your accent. And no, she stayed there for over twenty something years. Yeah. Uh, she know more, more and more and more things that we have not even have. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But that is how he began. When she was beginning like me, mm -hmm. I will even say I'm better than him because mm -hmm. I have been in, in a school and I've been with people. I started teaching white back at when I was at Sunyane. Mm -hmm. I started teaching music there because I, when I sit in the jail and play and then. Other people are there, they just come to me and I say, look, I want to learn this. And then I have to teach them how to do it. And it's not just a crowd here that I come to learn how to teach. I started sure. teaching back five years right. before I get here. But that's how it works. So uh, we are also started. And then before everything, I always try to apologize for maybe someone have used a bad word. Or maybe someone have, uh, have said something which is not right. No, we are just messing up our languages, say stuff like that. So we all apologize at the end of the student who comes here to say, if no, I miss, I miss say something, you forgive me, because I am still learning. I'm still trying to get the thing, the the, the whole thing. Yeah, um, well, I think you guys do a great job, <laughs> especially between all of you. You make a wonderful team. So thank you. Keep on keeping on and keep the DMC alive. Hello, I'm reporting again from Ghana, West Africa. Um, this time I'm joined by Emmanuel Ogbeli. He is the director of the Dog Bay Cultural Institute in Kobaia, Ghana. It's in the Volta region in the southeast part of the country. And our students spent about 10 days here in Kobaia two weeks ago, and I'm back here now doing a little bit more studying before heading home. So I was able to catch Emmanuel to ask him some questions before I head out. So welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you could just start by telling us um, a little bit about uh, the history of Dog Bay and who founded it and how long it's been around and what its main mission is. Thank you. Um... Like you said earlier on, my name is Emmanuel Agbeli. Um, <clears throat> Dagba um, was established by my late dad, called Godwin Agbeli, who was uh, a master drummer, West Africa master drummer and dancer. Um, uh, spent most of his time in Accra. He's the founder, also the founder of Sankofa Dance Theater. He works at the, um, before the name was uh, Act Center of Ghana, but now called Center for National Culture. Mm -hmm. So he works there. Um, uh, after my secondary school education, uh, I fully worked with him. But during my school time, I've been working with him. Uh, but then, uh, after I completed, I decided to go go in fully. I grew up like two a year two. I started drumming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, we inherited that from our great great grandfather called Adedi, who was a great master drummer. Mm. So passes through my dad and to us, okay. all of my uh, brothers and even sisters. So uh, my dad was into this and, and then he teaches the music to 
um, all white, all over uh, the country, I mean the world. Mm -hmm. And also uh, teaches the Africans, Ghanaians, uh, groups, churches, it, it, name them, you know. So Everyone. most of the times I, uh, I helped him when I was in school, I helped him to teach or do some programs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when he travels outside, I stay back to, you know, groups call me to complete what he's, he was doing and all that. So I've been mm -hmm. working with him uh, hand to hand uh, before he finally came to the hometown, Kopoya, to build an institute mm -hmm. uh, culture. What year was that? Uh, that? I mean, I'm talking okay. about 22 years ago. Okay. Yeah. When we were in Accra, I moved from Kopeya to Ashama and then to Accra to stay with him. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, when at Accent, when he brings students, uh, I teach, I help him to teach the students. Mm -hmm. I always spend a lot of my time with the Sankofa Dance Theater group. Uh, it, every time when I come from school. So um, sometimes he travels and sends students for me to be teaching. Mm -hmm. So he's outside in the state and then I stay here to teach uh, students mm -hmm. and some of his groups. And then somewhere along the line, I started to get my own groups too mm -hmm. that I teach and form groups for some people. Mm -hmm. So shortly, uh, he decided he should build an accent that, uh, a, a cultural center to uh, expand the um, music. Mm -hmm. But then he couldn't do it in Accra because throughout our research from the student, it is too busy in yeah. Accra for them to pay attention to this music. Mm -hmm. And one side of it, they were like, we traveled to Africa, Ghana to see different things, but not to see things similar to America. Right. Another so 100% they are right. Mm -hmm. Center shouldn't be there. We moved to Ashama. We tried it. People were complaining, you're disturbing the, the area. You're, the sound is oh. too loud. It sounds like, Where's no. Where's Ashama? Ashama is, is uh, around Tema, which is like, oh, okay. yeah, from like about 20 minutes drive when you're, you're coming, going to uh, Accra from Aplau, my hometown. Uh -huh. Um getting to Accra, you drive through Tema, Ashama. Okay. They are opposite. So you drive through Tema, Ashama 20 minutes before you get to Accra. Okay. Yeah. So, and we own a house there. My dad built a house ah, there. So, okay. yeah, family house there. So, from Accra, we moved to Ashama to stay there. But they couldn't work because people around, our neighbors think we were disturbing and still don't think it is still looking like not what they want to see. Too urban. Yeah. So yeah. then we finally uh, came back to the community, to the village mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, to start to keep it going. And then they love it there. Uh, it's like everywhere. Drumming opens from money to another money. No mm -hmm. problem. All kids who come around and be playing, helping to play, to teach, they were like, oh, this is what we're looking for. So gradually for some two, three years, well, with that building, uh, and then uh, my dad decided to start okay. some uh, structures, which is 22 years ago, uh -huh. it was established. Uh -huh. So I still stayed, handled the institute, my dad travels. And most of the students who love me to teach them because they think my dad was like, you know, he's a big guy. And so yeah. they were like, oh, I'm scared. You know, ah, so you don't have to be scared. <laughs> you, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I've heard a lot about him. They don't feel comfortable ah. to learn with him. And then they think, and believe me, I, 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 I humble myself to build, I polish up the, the talent I had on music from my dad mm -hmm. and I, I did do a lot of research with him mm -hmm. so i'm like almost like we are twins in the music yeah yeah i'm almost there as him mm -hmm. so we're like so what next let's let's emmanuel let's let's you know teach me <laughs> you know, I don't want, so my dad was like okay 
So he will stay away until maybe if the person is spending two weeks or three weeks, he will let every week would like to come to class and see how far. Uh-huh. Every week you come and see how far. And even if you come to class, he sleeps because there's nothing to do. Ah. You know. He so, just take a nap. Yeah. So it was like everything was yeah there. And we've been moving strongly well until I traveled my first uh, visit to the U.S. in Vermont was in 97. 97, okay. Yeah. And uh, I was there for six months before I heard that my dad was sick. Uh -huh. seriously admitted in the hospital i came back well i didn't come back because of his sickness actually uh, uh, that was the end of my stay for six months mm -hmm. so i came back and then the 98 it, it got serious mm -hmm. and so he passed away right in since then yeah but then before he died the main reason of following all this music from our childhood his childhood my childhood Accra, Ashama, down to Kopoya, our goal is to share the music to people all around the world. Mm -hmm. our, you see, our culture and the music is so rich and lovely that, you know, it, it, it kills too. So uh, we're like, yeah, we, we don't have to hide it. We mm -hmm. need to spread it mm -hmm. to bring so that we can unite with the music. And believe me, through that music, I've learned a lot from outside people, I've known so many people, like I know you too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you see, yeah, that was how it came, all came about. Yeah, yeah, and up till now, thank God, uh, we are still moving. But I hope if he's supposed to be around, things could be better than this because he, by then he was wearing a big shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spiritually, financially, uh, uh, emotionally, in all areas. But then he died suddenly yeah. that um, things were not up to their positions before he passed away. And I felt very, very, very difficult to put my foot into the, that shoe yeah, I'm sure. of his to keep it moving as he could do. Mm -hmm. But then with my, my hope and strongness and my effort before he died... Uh, led us up to this level mm -hmm. and the people thought that was the end ah. some students some citizens some people who knows my dad friends and other they thought that would be the end mm -hmm. because like i was saying the shoe was huge he was a very huge big person in the music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then well, 20, 20 years later, that's certainly not the case. I mean, it is still, you know, when you meet someone in the United, from my perspective, when you meet someone in the United States who's who's been to Ghana and is a musician or studied music in Ghana, it's almost inevitable that they're going to say one of their stops was Kopeia yeah. and Dog Bay. So it, it's it's well known in the small community in the states that you know that exists that enjoys Ghanaian music. Um, yeah. And the center, you know, you were talking about the structure of the center a little bit. Um, there's, um, there's a dormitory for mm -hmm. students to yeah. stay. There's a summer hut for dancing and drumming. Yeah. And there's several different buildings. Mm -hmm. um, did those all, uh, were they all built at the same time? Or was it kind of a process of, a process. of building Actually, the process. campus? Actually, process. When you, when, when you come to Dagba, uh Coming in through the community oh, walkway into Dagba, you will meet a very big uh, port. Mm -hmm. We wrote on it, Wezo uh, Kutinano, meaning welcome, fresh water and drink. That is the face of the Dagba Institute, mm -hmm. the, or the front door. That structure, you, you see a building who, which has the office, some three rooms, like room eight, room nine, and room seven, and then the performing stage. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, some looms there. We do traditional canteen weaving. Mm -hmm. That was the first structure ah, he built. Okay. And then after some years, he was like, oh, those three rooms, three bedrooms is not enough it's at not all. Enough. <laughs> so the main dome mm -hmm. was built. In front of the... Um, the first structure, there is a, uh, a floor, uh, like a, a concrete a stage. Mm -hmm. That is, by then, that was where we, we practice, we teach. Mm -hmm. 
And then after the dome was built, we were like, no, we need some other place. So the summer hut, the cycle summer hut came where we, we now practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so two of your brothers, Ruben mm -hmm. and Nani, are also incredible musicians. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been so cool to, to meet all three of you and see your similarities and your differences. But um, most strikingly, um, how how well you know the repertoire, all three of you. It's incredible and how amazing musicians and teachers you are. And actually, Nani has been on the podcast before. Okay. Yeah, so we've had the chance to talk to him as well. Um, but you all three are teaching and mm -hmm. traveling. Mm -hmm. And can you talk about your relationship with your brothers and, and kind of um, how the three of you, I don't almost see it as the three of you are, are working to keep Godwin's tradition and legacy alive. Yeah, actually, uh, we are more than the three in 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 the area that you you are talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, all, uh, my dad, we had uh, ten children, mm -hmm. and uh, he got married to four, uh, three, four wives. Uh -huh. So, uh, but the first wife is my our mom. Okay. So the the oldest children for Godwin, the late Godwin, our dad is. Ruben was the first, I'm the second, Nani, third, and then, um, actually, I the third one wasn't a Nani. The third one died. Who came after me died. Mm -hmm. That is why we have a Nani. A Nani is the fourth continuous boy born. Okay. Yeah. The wow. third boy continuously, the first boy will have any name, second boy will have any name, third boy, uh, traditionally, will be given Mesa. Mensa. Mensa. Uh -huh. The fourth boy again, traditionally, a nanny. A nanny. Fifth boy will be a noom. A noom. Uh -huh. But nanny, so nanny was the fourth boy. So okay. he, there was a, 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 a boy after me uh -huh. who died actually before nanny came. So right now, the three of us, Ruben, myself, nanny, and one of our younger brother who is from different mother mm -hmm. it's called Elika Elika mm -hmm. he's also into the music right mm -hmm. now he's even oh he's in school right yeah he's him. yeah okay. he's working at Winnie mm -hmm. uh, college where my dad taught seriously before my dad was uh -huh. there for several years before he died okay after he died they got somebody to come and represent uh, work for them for some time they think he's not doing the good work. Mm. So they came back to, to take me to go and represent. But then I was like, hey, what I'm doing here, I can't go there. If I go there, there will be no Dagba. Yeah. You so have to be running the they, they, came, they came down like many times. But I was like, no, please. I explained everything to them. If you really love the work we are doing, the work my dad did, and not to tarnish his name, I think you should understand me and, and leave me here mm -hmm. so that I can build more people. Mm -hmm. So they understood. Then I gave them one of my staff called uh, James Equi. Okay. So he's there now for the past uh, four or five years or six years. Mm -hmm. He's there now. So that is the school uh, my younger brother Elika is now. Ruben, Nani, and myself, we are so... We are, we are, I won't say, we say there is a proverb, we say, a gem, the salt doesn't praise itself. Huh. The people who eat it, who will say, ah, there's a salt in this food. <laughs> salt can't talk about itself. So we can't talk about how best we are. <laughs> you understand me? Yeah. We are, because people say it a lot. And this is part of it when I said, when my father died, that a lot of people think this is the end of it, mm -hmm. of his toiling. You understand? Because it, you can't find our the, the three brothers' relationship we had, you can't find it in other children. As soon as their father died, it becomes problem. Fighting here and there. This person won this. This person won that. That person said, I want to stand here. I want to, I need this position. Right. And it, it doesn't end well. So people were thinking this will happen between us, especially the three of us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Because it we hasn't. had a very good home train from my mom my dad. So we understood. And mostly, I taught Nani. Mm -hmm. I taught Nani a whole lot of 
uh, uh, foundation skills in the music. So definitely he respect himself and respect me for that matter. Ruben, we grew up in a, 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 a Chagbeko, traditional Chagbeko group in Ashama. He was their master drummer. I was the dance leader before we moved to Accra Sankofa. Okay. I respect Ruben as a very strong drummer. Mm-hmm. Um, I became a drummer when he left. He had to leave Sankofa to lend a uh, 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 work in Tema. So there was nobody in Sankofa after my dad to play the lead drum. Oh, wow. So I have to leave the lead dancing to drumming. Oh. That was how... It, it, the, you know, the gift was there. I know the rhythms, but then you have to train. You know, like I keep saying, each instrument will give you its muscles to handle it. Yeah. When I was playing at Timobu, you can't hear the sound because I look very smallish and, you know, it was like my, my dad would say, hey, he, when I'm playing, he would, he would hold his ears uh. and pull it and then I know sound system. <laughs> So, you know, I, I struggled a lot to put up uh, sound because I wasn't, uh, you know, I was slim, very, very small. Okay. So, but then, so we all respect. They all know that you work with our dad mm-hmm. closely. All research, even teaching the students before our time. Because when I, I was doing all that, Ruben was busy in his uh, uh, learning, mm-hmm. uh, electrical work. Nani was busy in school. Mm-hmm. He is now in his uh, uh, senior high school. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we respect ourselves and then they support me so, so much. Even though we went through some obstacles, a whole lot of obstacles. But then they are all triers. We were able to overcome them and then the, we, we moved. And we're still moving, uh, sharing ideas and, mm-hmm. you know... That's great. Yeah. And so you're all, all three of you are members of Sankofa, as you mentioned. Yep. Yeah. And the staff at Dog Bay is made up also of, of members of Sankofa. No. Right? Or no? no? I came, when I came back from, when I, I finished, I still, I stayed in Accra. Uh-huh. And then that was when the uh, uh, Dog Bay wasn't built. Uh-huh. Robert Levin Mm-hmm. Uh, ask me to come down. I'm a very good artist. I did act mm-hmm. in, in, in secondary school mm-hmm. of one of my major courses. So I do painting. Yes. Uh, I even a opened... lot of your paintings are in Dagbe, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So um, Robert said, you know, and you know, Robert is into school, not too much in music. He loved the music. He also learned music. But then out of the music, he helped build school, Kopoya School. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 school. Mm-hmm. So he was like, oh, Emmanuel, you know, in Accra, back in Accra when he came, was like, I want to employ you so you can stay in copper year and teach and give your talent to, to the youth in mm-hmm. the community. So, I, you know, my dad spoke to me about it. I thought about it. Oh, I don't want to come and stay in the village, yeah. <laughs> you know. But, you know, those times we do, we actually from our family, we respect a lot. You can say no to elders and parents, mm-hmm. especially when you thought about it and say that they are, they are trying to direct you to good position. So yeah. I accepted. So I came down. Okay. Yeah. So when I came down, I was teaching arts and music in the school. Okay. And I decided, so that's the only area. If there's no student, I'm just there. So then I have the school issues. I teach art mm-hmm. from kindergarten to class six. Okay. And then I teach, uh, I try to, but then my dad formed a school troop okay. at couple of years. So mm-hmm. I've been training the school troop. Mm-hmm. But that is for school. Then I was like, Oh, I'm itching. So when we close and weekends, I don't drum. I don't see. I, I have so many, many things in my head, especially in Achagbeko. So I have headache. You know, Achagbeko specifically gets into me like a, I possess the thing. So I, it makes me look like I was that day at the battlefield with Kini. So most of the time, <laughs> things run into my... So that is why I love to go around and be teaching. When I deliver, then my head falls down. Ah. But then within some week, if I don't teach, especially if I don't teach Agbeko, you see, I, I, my, my brain becomes like huge and running around, running around. 
when I sleep, I keep dreaming like do this, teach this, do it like this. I mean, wow. then when I came here, I was like suffering from the same thing. So I decided to form called the youths and then Odati and the others and to, to be teaching them. Then I trained them uh, and I named the group Sankofa uh -huh. Root 2. Um, I called uh, my dad's group in Accra Root 1 and okay. then I formed Root 2 here. I formed Root 3 in Vermont. Oh. Yeah. Uh, back in 98, after I did my first visit mm -hmm. in 97, 98, 99, I was there again. So, I, and those are the time where Vermont is, Global Village Project. They have this group. They bring 60 students to Dagba, to Ghana every year. 60. Whoa. Six at zero a time? At a time. So, what they, they do, stay? what they do is when they come, they have two weeks with Dagba and then two week tours in, in, in Kumansi, Cape Coast, and all that. So, when they get to the airport, we pick them to uh, a hotel and then we divide the group into two. Ah. 30, 30. So 30 will go to the tours in all these Kumasi, and, uh, Elmina and all that. Two, uh, 30 will come for us, with us for 30, day, uh, I mean the two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then after two weeks, these people go to that place and these people come switch here. Them out. Switch Is it always the same people or always different people? Different, different. Always and different. they are high school Oh, children, wow. actually led by uh, a man called Mark Johnson. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it has been going like that. So they, they, and most of the leaders, they, they have a group in Vermont called Jekulu mm -hmm. Performing Group. And uh, most of their leaders are in this group. So they advance, they play mostly Jibe music. So when I was there, I worked with them and the guys were like, you are so amazing. You play our music, palm drumming like crazy. You, you handle the jibe like, you, because sometimes when I have a workshop, some of the drummers want to come and play for me to help me teach the class. Uh -huh. But they can't play our music uh, like I, I, I help them play this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of the Jekulu members join this group okay. to be coming to Dagba. So they got to a higher area of so they were so when I left when I went there I put them together and they have this strong Achagweko group in Gahun so they go around to perform cool was I think it was 99 we had a very huge program uh in Ghana uh, uh a music program at Bolgatanga so they need a group to stand, every group to stand for the ever chiefs who to represent the ever chief there to move. You know, when the ever chief is going, you move with the chief and play music and have okay. a program. So we were choosing. Sankofa Route 2 was choosing. Wow. So I was like, well, this is an opportunity. I, um, I wanted to join the Sankofas together. Ah. So I called some members from Sankofa Route 1 from Accra, mm -hmm. Sankofa route, route 3 from U.S., uh -huh. Vermont, and then Sankofa Route 2 who are home guys. Uh -huh. So all came. Thank God uh, those I invited from the U.S., they were like, this is a great opportunity. We can make it. So they came. So they were Americans among us for that big program. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cultural festival. So that that was how uh, the Sankofa route two one two and three came. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, when I was forming that group route two here was the time where I was getting staffs mm -hmm. for two hundred dagba, uh -huh. and it's not easy. It is not about only drumming and teaching, but attitude. How mm -hmm. to handle students. Our students had a fantastic experience. Mm. And it's great to have so many teachers with different personalities and different specialties also. Mm. Because you see different students connect with different teachers. And especially in the private lessons, you know, they kind of find people that they connect to. And um, get to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with them. So, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we're sitting here on your farm. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, you know, if you have any 
any hobbies or things that you like to do outside of drumming and dancing and outside of music um, yeah, that kind actually, of fill your life? Yeah, I, um, I, there are two hobbies that I have. I put the two of them into business. I mean, all led me into business. But right now, it's only one that is functioning, which is artwork. Right. And then the farming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love plants. Naturally, I love plants. And that led me into farming. Mm-hmm. And then arts. I love... Once you, see, you see, it's connected. Once you love nature, automatically you are into art. And uh, if, you, if you get close to it, you, you, you become an artist. And in art, I do paintings, I do sculptures, and uh, a, a lot of areas. I even had uh, my art shop in the U.S. Which, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes when you get to, when you go to the net, you can see some few works of mine. Where is it? Uh, when you go to, uh, uh, like, www.imanuagbeli. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can you can get like all you're looking for African art uh, ah, artist or Ghanaian artist. You can find I still it yeah online. you find okay. my yeah you find some of my old awesome uh, yeah my beginning yeah so I um, uh, uh, Rasmussen Joe Rasmussen who was one of our uh, my dad's friend and he also brings students from uh, Tennessee okay uh, Tennessee Tech from that school he he actually had um, shop for my artworks he sold my artworks until he died and then the business collapsed too so okay. i draw here and then i send there so and then what pushed me out from drawing is too much busy i becomes like all eyes for almost everybody uh my community uh my i mean a flower as a whole you know i i also with in the, we have some proverbs say a vina clash in your ye do not plum a chichun. The child that washes his hand well eats with the elders. Because of that, the, all the chiefs like warming in most of their activities and meetings and advices. They almost giving me some positions like the, the youth uh, uh, chief. Um, I don't want to take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some few things. Okay. So because of in the school, I'm the SMC chairman of the school. Okay. Um, uh, I have a family and for myself and all that. So I became too much busy to sit and draw. Right. So automatically that moved me away from painting. Right. Yeah. Uh, but then with my loving nature, made it move me into farming. Mm-hmm. And right now... It's one of my side business uh, 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 um, after Dagbe. I started small on a, a plot of uh, one half acre mm-hmm. back in the uh, Aflau, close to the beach, and it's the seashore sand. Mm. I took some, a lot of student groups, students to my, that farm before. I mean, in 2000, when I started that. <laughs> Yeah, so that is that is my awesome. hobby and then my side business. Yeah. Those are, yeah. That's awesome. Very thank cool. Thank well, you. thank you so much for taking the time to chat and again yeah. for sharing your center with us. We had a great experience and I recommend it to everyone who's listening to uh, come to Dog Bay Cultural Institute in Copaya, Ghana. So yeah. check it out. They've Please got a great calm website. Down. Calm down. We have a lot of things that will give you... And then your life will change in music. Music change people. I mean, sometimes you have too much thinking. You get into music, you're, you, you're out of it. So our, our vision, our, in Ghana we say moro. Our moro is to, 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 to split, to, to move the music to every home, every life, every person on this earth. I mean... It is in all uh, religions. It doesn't matter what kind of religion you believe. We have music that are good for Christians, good for the traditionalists, good for Muslims. We play all kind of musics. Yeah. We we are like just one mother to her children. <laughs> yeah. So visit us. Yeah. It's a good <laughs> motto. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.